So this morning we're going to head out and uh, see if we can do a little bit of a game draft before we go fishing. Um, we can only fish after game draft time, which is 8 o'clock. So we've got about an hour and 20 minutes to kill. So heard some cheetah coming. Well, what I suspect was cheetah coming past the staff accommodation last night. There was some kudu barking and some reed buck alarm calling. So I can only suspect that it's uh, one of the cheetahs or otherwise the two brothers. So we're going to hit the fence line and see if we can find some tracks and then we will follow up on them and if we find them we find them if we don't we don't uh, and then from there we're going to head to hippo dam and we're going to see if we can get a bass for the catch and cook tonight awesome let's get going <laughs> So we've had the fence lines and I've uh, come up with what I was looking for. Uh, it's going in the wrong direction. So we're just going to turn around and I'll take you guys out and show you what we're going to be following here. Looks like two sets of tracks. Yeah, the rain fell last night so it's quite muddy. But if you guys take a look here, that is a nice clean cheetah track. And heading down the fence line, the reason I say it's two brothers can see they walk with their feet like that there's the other brother to the right to the left sorry so yeah you can see they've taken a nice truck down the road so we'll see if we can find these guys for you and the two particular brothers that we're looking for here um, they are quite important cheetahs their mother was rewilded and um, released onto the reserve and they are good bloodlines so you see some very healthy cheetahs if we find them find these guys. As you can see a lot of rain fell last night. Eh? It's been muddy down by the dams. Some more tracks on the road there. <coughs> Some of the usual suspects over here, some kudu, male kudu, Caglafini, and uh, I love a kudu, eh? I really, really, really love kudu. I just can't finish a whole one by myself. So let's get down to those waters. <laughs> right, so on our right hand side here, this is Woodlands Dam, it used to be a cracker dam for bass. Unfortunately, during our, we had about a seven year drought during that drought period here on Nambiti. This dam unfortunately ran dry. A lot of the fish were relocated up onto the top dam. Unfortunately for us, just bad timing. They were actually redoing the, the, the road on the outside. And um, they had put uh, lime on the road to bind the road. And what happened was a lot of that filtered into Hippo Dam and a lot of the yellow fish died, etc. But this dam's looking great again, nice and full. So hopefully it will be getting itself stocked up here and there. We often take a fish from the top and drop it in the bottom. Uh, but our main target today is at the top here. We're gonna we're gonna go for a, a decent fish in Hippo Dam. Obviously we're gonna leave the breeding stock behind. Keep something that's maybe a kilo, 800 grams. It's only two people eating off this fish tonight. So we will. We will definitely do in, be doing some releasing, hopefully, if we get some decent fish. But yeah, it's a beautiful dam. Check this dam wall in front of us. Here we are. I think we'll start this side of the dam. If we don't have any luck, we will switch over to the other. Let's see what we can get. So I'm going to be trying this little uh, fluke here, it's a zoom bait, give this little guy a bash, you know they prefer the darker colours especially after the rain, water's a bit dirtier, I'm going to go weedless with him so that uh, 
I don't get snagged up the whole time. You can actually see that there's a lot of structure in the water here. You can see there's acacias that have been, you know, the water's really, really up. So it's going to be a bit of a struggle, but we'll try and get through the little channels and uh, work our way around it. Awesome. There's already a little surface there. Uh, there's a bit too much structure in the water here, not getting any, any action, any luck. So we're going to head over to the other side. Oh, this black cotton soil, eh? you can get stuck here so easily. And uh, see if that's not maybe a bit more productive. See you on that side. It would be like a book or mate. So we're definitely not gonna keep this guy. That's our first on. It's hopefully near with this guy. Yeah, we're just busy fishing here and uh, I don't think you're gonna hear it now, but something's just killed the warthog. Up at the top there you could hear the warthog squealing. And uh, see there's a giraffe also staring at it. So there's definitely something that's happened down there. We might even go and investigate it. I reckon probably a lioness killing a warthog. But uh, whether we're going to find her or not is a whole different story due to the fact that, I mean, it's quite thick out there. Look out there. Okay, so uh, it wasn't a very successful morning. Obviously, the weather did change a bit. Got two little fish and then um, fortunately, Gabriel got one, one that's... Uh, a sizable fish but we will be using him and uh, what I'm going to do today is uh, he's not a very big fish as you can see but I'm going to keep the head and everything on I'm going to fleck him and we're going to be putting him on the braai uh, with a recipe that I've got so thank you very much Gabriel this is going to be our dinner tonight we'll see you guys back at the cleaning yeah the weather here is just something else lately it's hot cold raining and then 40 degrees then back down to 8 degrees it's just been it's been chaotic the last couple of days. Anyway, we went to investigate that warthog. It's out of sight. We can't see anything there. So, But I do suspect it was a lion. We got one uh, fair size bass. So we're going to head back to camp now. Make a fire and I'm going to be brying him. And uh, yeah, we'll just there's a couple of warthog up ahead. They might be gathering for the funeral. I'm not sure. But uh, we'll see what we see on the way home. Well, thanks for joining us, guys. Call these highway pigs because they're not too bothered about the vehicle, eh? Just having a good old munch here. Two males and a female. I'm loving all this new grass after all the rain. Also in the fire break, so it's really good grass for them. Awesome little piggies! One of them lost their lives a little bit earlier on. That is what it is. It's a pity we couldn't see that, but we heard it, so it was quite a show. Kudu bull up ahead, a bit of a roadblock. 
don't have any bride money here with me, so it's going to be a bit of a tough one. Let's see what he has to say. And there's also a blacksmith lapwing on the floor in front of us. Amazing how agile these guys are. They can jump fences, they'll run down this hill like it's nobody's business. Or he's just going to stand in the road and stay there. Thanks, buddy. And straight back onto the road behind us. Right, so I'm coming here to collect some of the ingredients. How's it, James? How's it, William? How are you, buddy? Good, thanks, you. James came fishing with us yesterday, and uh, yeah, you got a mom back here. It was a bit of tough conditions yesterday, <laughs> but yeah, he's going to help me with some uh, ingredients today from his dad's garden. So this is a spec worm. I'm going to make a salad out of this, James. I need about 250 grams, so if you can cut me about six of these off, please, man. All right, and then we're going to head up to the to the actual vegetable garden. All right, yeah, so we're going to go in here. James is going to get me some rosemary. Yeah, just uh, get me two, two or three stalks of rosemary. They're not big ones, bud. One or two nice stalks of lemongrass, please. Let me check the lack of lemongrass here. And then also some parsley. This is good stuff. All right, that's perfect. Thank you, my bud. Shot for yesterday's help. I appreciate it. Evening, guys. Um, this is a Porcolatria afra, otherwise known as the speck worm. This thing grows in pretty much any garden in South Africa. And I'm going to be utilizing it for a salad. And this thing's got a lot of medicinal uses as well as values for, for cooking and eating. You're going to have to peel the leaves off to utilize for the salad. You can pretty much eat it off the tree. If you clip it quickly, then the tannins don't get to the leaves. It still has a lot of tannins in, so it's got like a bit of a zesty flavor. But I think in the salad with the other ingredients, it's going to be fantastic. So yeah, guys, spec worm. Get one in your garden. It's fantastic. What's this animal doing here? This terrorist is at it again. What are you doing? What are you actually doing? Monty, you must stop this nonsense, right? seriously. A naughty goat. <laughs> An old Kaya as well. So we've got calamati olives. We've got good alumi cheese. One red onion. Your speck worm, four tomatoes and a cucumber. It's all going to be put together and uh, put into a salad with some balsamic vinegar. Okay, we're going to start with the onion. Red onion needs to be sliced, not diced, so nice little slices. That off there. I'm going to start with the speck worm here. Make sure you don't get any of the branchlets because if you get a branchlet, it's going to have a lot of tannins in it. It's the last thing you need. Gives you a nice zesty flavor, as I mentioned earlier on. You don't want to take these, these ugly ones, you know, they could have had insects eating on them, put them one side. You want the nice green ones. Anyway, I'm sure you guys get the idea. Pick these off and uh, then we'll resume just now. Those guys in there. It's pet worm salad. It's gonna be like a second last ingredient. So you're gonna do four, uh, four tomatoes like this. Basically gonna cube them up. Once we fry up the luomi, we're going to toss the salad. Cut the juice out of these calamari olives. Then we're going to toss the salad. So basically just give this a good toss around. And we're going to drizzle some olive oil over there. And we're going to drizzle some balsamic vinegar over that. And then we're going to fry up the lumi and add that in, but this is going to go into the fridge until that final ingredient. All right, so that's preparation of the salad, and we'll move on to the fish shortly. Yeah, so I'm going to be scaling this fish now. Just try and keep as many of the scales in the bucket there as possible. Go. Scaled and 
ready to go. As I said, we're going to flick him, so I've just cut him here. I've started to cut down right close to the bone. the gills out here, move all the stomachs out, along with the gills. Oh look at this guy, he's been digesting, digesting a little fluke that obviously came off somebody's bait. It's a good thing we caught this guy and took him out, that could have killed him. If we won't be using that as bait again. and there you have a nicely flecked bass. I'm going to go wash him under the outside tap. And there you have it. Flecked bass. He's going to go on the bride like that tonight. There you go. Alrighty. So I'm going to finish off the salad here. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut the halloumi into strips like this. Then what I'm going to do is cut Monty. Stop that. I'm going to cut his head but in the camera, man. Eh? <laughs> this goat, this goat. I don't know what to do with him. Just focus on him. Stop that. Yeah. I'm going dri to drizzle these with olive oil quickly. And then I'm going to get them in the pan. So, just basically rub a bit of olive oil on these guys. <laughs> goat still head but in the camera, man. Well, Sheldon, thank you, Sheldon, for coming to assist you today. today. Just want that for the pan. Right, so these guys are coated in olive oil. I'm going to get the pan on. I'm going to fry these up. And then we're going to just pop them into the salad like that. So you're going to have good chunks of alumi. Yeah, so we got the alumi in here at a medium temperature. And there you can get a little bit browned on the outside. And then we add it to the salad. There we go. So I'm just going to let that go there. And uh, once we turn it around, we'll show you what it looks like. Not give that a toss so that when you grab, you grab actually a bit of lumi as well as some salad, some speckworm salad. Lovely stuff. Look at that, guys. This really looks good. We'll just drizzle a little bit of olive oil on you. And then, uh, last but not least, a little bit of balsamic vinegar. Just like that and then that's gonna go back into the fridge and the salad is gonna be boss I'll tell you that it's gonna be boss now we start the preparation for the fish let's get this bad boy going all right guys yeah, I'm about to start a um, little sauce which I generally use for I've used a lot for Leary's in the past Leafus very good for Leafus and the way that I cook it is imperative, obviously. Um, a lot of people just baste in the sauce. What I do is I actually live fish in tin foil and I allow it to actually boil in its own sauce. And then I take the sauce out, then I baste the top of the fish and I turn it around and scorch it on the bry, a really hot fire. Um, so we're gonna do, we're gonna practice this on the bass and see what it comes out like. So we're gonna take a dollop of butter. All right, dollop of butter in there. Whilst this is busy going down, I have got some rosemary over here. So I'm just going to pop these in here. I'm going to let that go. Those are going to come out a little bit later. The lemongrass, you'll see what I'll do with that a little bit later on. I'm just going to basically get lemongrass very tough and robust. So I'm going to hit that a little bit later. We don't obviously want to digest this because it's uh, quite a, a rough story here. Um, we're going to use that. Just gonna hit, hit it with the back of the knife just now, and we are gonna pop that actually into the tin foil with a fish. That in there. Garlic, always a winner for a fish. Just under a tablespoon of garlic, you don't want too much. We're gonna go with some lemon juice, even though we got lemon grass going, but the lemon grass has a different function. The lemon juice in there. Apricot jam, you're gonna want about a tablespoon. And just get that all in there. 
and get this going. Turn this down. All the way down and just let it simmer. Basically we're going to get this down into one big nice pulp. And that is going to be going over the fish in the tin foil. It's actually going to boil inside this juice. Like you know, Wild Bull wouldn't be cooking without a bit of his favorite ingredient. A little bit of beer, just to make that more than enough to actually cover the fish while it's boiling on the fire in the tin foil. Final ingredient, just a little bit of salt and pepper. You can see that's starting to simmer a little bit there. Oh, this is gonna be good. This is gonna be like a stir, let it simmer a bit more, and now I'm gonna get the fish ready. Now I'm gonna create a tin foil barrier for this fish. Close this up, and hold this guy in a bit. Hold him up. You gotta try and judge it by the size of the actual fish. We'll do a little bit more of this molding and shaping to keep the sauces in. One time scaled and flecked bass, nicely in the middle there. And what we do is we just get this up so that you don't use too many juices. You want to get him basically covered in the juice. Now we're going to put this on the fire. I don't use fish spice with this recipe. Just go with a bit of salt and pepper directly. Secret with the lemongrass is coming now. All right guys, so with the lemongrass, we just give it a hold tight here. Smash it up nicely with the back of the knife. You don't want it to break, but this just allows it to release its flavors. And then we just Pack it around the fish on the outside like this. That will release some very, very nice flavors in there. Get the sauce out. Now, most people will baste this onto their fish. I want my fish to actually cook inside the sauce. So, I'm just gonna drop that over there. Let that lie for a bit. Take this bad boy out. That's enough flavor from them. Fantastic, guys. Um, let's get this thing on the bra. Fire! Here we go. Let's get it up here. Calls a lack of And we're just going to let that cruise along there. Once it starts to bubble, I'll turn it the other way so the other side cooks so nicely in the juices. Once we're done, I'll take the juices out, turn it around, scorch it. But this thing is going to go very lacquer. So guys, yeah, we're starting to take some action. You can see it's starting to bubble and boil. This side hasn't gone yet, but it's going to go shortly. And uh, once that's going on and the meat starts to whiten, that's where we're going to flip this over and scorch it. All right, guys, we're just about ready to turn the fish. So what we want is this red just to become a little bit more white. And then this thing is going to be oof, delicious, eh? Wow, yeah, just about ready to turn this fire school down. So I'm going to put, I'm going to close the grid. I'm going to throw the sauce out. And this guy, oh, looks delicious. Is going to be taken much closer to the coals. And we're going to save that sauce and we're going to baste the top of him. And then we're going to scorch him properly. So basically what we're going to do now is we're just going to scorch the meat, open meat side of this. And we're going to drop this fire down and we're going to get a crispy, crispy brown. And we're going to be able to flake that middle bone off and eat it like a gearbox if you wish. So check this side, all we want to do is brown that. Fantastic, this is going to be a really, really good meal. Oh man, I'm so hungry. This is going to be good guys. I'm going to grab a little bit of the halloumi spectrum salad here. Oh, look at that. Guys, uh, you can just peel away this fish and just taste a little piece here. Mm. Bloody hell, that's good. Bloody hell. I'm going to dish myself up a 
sizable portion of the back and the back fillet. And this is going to be my meal for the night. I'm going to take a sit down and have a good chow. Guys, I'm not going to lie to you. This alumi cheese and speckworm salad is a winner. This batch I ever. Mmm. Give me none of this, guys. Look at that. Mmm. That's a bloody good piece of meat. You can take a fish from anywhere, prepare it properly. You have the reasonable capacity to know what kind of plants are around you to benefit you. And in the long run, at the end of the day, you'll have good meals. Look, not always cooked in a kitchen, not always great like this. You won't always have all the ingredients, but you will never go hungry, guys. This is a vision for the future, and I think it's a very sustainable one. I hope you enjoyed the show. Please subscribe, click on the button below, join the Catch and Cook, and enjoy every video that you get, because this is sustainability at its best. Guys, this was caught out of a dam, and I'm going to be chowing on this big worm. I have so many recipes, guys. I can take you on a game drive and show you trees with medicinal plants. I can literally take you on a run around through all the different provinces of our country and we can eat and just enjoy what natural resources we have and we can keep it tidy. So please guys, like and share. Signing out, Wild Bull.